right before it. So using the mid function would allow us to actually perform that kind of calculation on the contact field. It can actually look at the field and we can determine uh, where that space exists for any given record. I'm actually going to uh, perform a, a somewhat more complex example because I, I think it's, it's a really good example. So what I have here is a gold mine database and if I actually hook up my history table to it, I want to group my report, bear with me. So now I'm grouping by my company record because every company has many histories. So now I can drag items from my history. So I want to look at, out of the history table, I want to see who did the history, um, when it was performed, certainly, and I have this ref field, which is kind of what went on. It's not the notes, per se, but it's, it's just like the general identifier. When I look at the report, you'll see right here that uh, for every kind of history, I have a date, and then I have this mishmash of a reference field. So the reference field is, is kind of giving me a general idea. So I'm guessing that the end user at one point typed in call space out. But then they, on this record, they did it against the Corey contact. Now I might have separate contacts at each record. So I can't always go back to the record to grab that guy. Because I might be doing something for someone else at the same company. The problem I'm trying to introduce here is that I want to be able to reliably grab Justin Hill or Dave Tripp or Corey out of this mangled mess of values. So for every of these items, I want to be able to see uh, the actual contact the history was against. And you can see here that it's actually stored within that, within that value. And the only thing we really have to, to, to kind of tell where that begins is I have this OC colon. And that's our only saving grace. So whenever we think about cutting strings out of strings, we have to know where to start. There has to be a reliable start position. Uh, in this case, it's actually pretty easy because every one of these reference lines has this little OC colon. And we know that our contact name begins right after that colon. And we also know that it goes, it keeps going until we get a paren, or actually ends, ends the field is what it is. So let's take the elephant a bite at a time. So the first thing we need to be able to do is that for this reference field, we have to know where to start cutting our string out. So we have to know where the OC colon starts. Hang with me, folks. This is really going to be worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and select new formula. And I'm going to call this name start. So the, again, this is the starting position in this whole mangled field of where does the OC happen. And the way I do that, I'm going to show you how to get there. In my function tree, I have all of these really cool string functions. And the function I want to use, actually, is the instring function. So the instring function is going, to sh is going to tell me the starting position of a string within another string. I know it kind of sounds complicated, but let me just show you how this works. If I open that up, I can kind of see the parameters that instring is taking. So instring is going to search the first string for the occurrence of the second one. It's easier to, to just show you. So I go ahead and I double click that. That gives me my in string function. Now I gotta fill in my parameters. Always keep in mind what the heck you're trying to do. So out of my reference field, that's the string to search. Out of that field, show me where the OC starts. The OC colon. Check your syntax, make sure save that. Alright, so again, what I like to do when I'm working on a formula, I like to drag that stuff right onto the report just so I can get a sense if it's working or not. So again, the name start is hopefully going to show us the character position of the O in OC colon, right? So on this one it's 54, on that one is 53. So you see that it's calculating it differently for every every item. So on this one, this is an easy one to count. So what that is telling me is that uh, the OC colon begins at character position 10. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 is the O in OC colon. I'm, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I just want to show you that 
what we really want is the star in this case of Cori. So we don't want 10, we want 11, 12, 13. 13 is the position that our first name starts on. So we want to actually return that. So we're actually going to edit this formula. And our name star isn't just the start of OC colon, it's actually going to be plus 3. Can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. So now, for any of these references, I know that that's going to reliably return the first character of the of the uh, the contact name here after OC colon. Okay, so that's half the battle, right? We have the starting position. Now we have to think about the ending position. So so let's just show you uh, again what you're going to run into if you just try to use mid just like this. I'm going to create a new formula field. So I'm going to start working on my name. So I'm going to call this formula name. And actually, I'll, again, we, we want to use the mid function. Okay, let's just briefly talk about what the mid function is going to do. The mid function is here available underneath my string tree. The mid takes the, that string and gives me a chunk of it. It starts it at a character position and goes X number of characters. So if I mid my reference field, my mashed up crazy field, if I mid that, and I mid that starting at my name start, remember we, we were so careful about how we calculated that based upon uh, off the OC plus three, so we can just slide that into there. And uh, actually what we'll do is we don't need the third parameter necessarily. I'm going to show you what happens if we just end the function like that. So the, the middle is taking the middle of this field and it's starting at this character and including that character. Let me go ahead and check my syntax. No errors found. So let's drag that right below our name start number just so we can really get an idea of how this is going to build itself out. Okay, so, okay, great. So it's grabbing, it's starting that middle, that middle function is grabbing a chunk of the reference string based upon the starting position, and in this case it's just going until the very end. So we're getting that end parentheses. So we, at this point we do have to take care of that. Now, so what we're going to do is actually um, create a name end formula. It's going to calculate the, uh, the ending position. Uh, because we want to be able to, to tell the middle function to only go so many characters for any given reference field. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new formula. And just like I had to calculate the name start, I'm going to calculate the name end. And again, always keep in mind what the heck you're doing. So okay, the name end is going to be an in string. Remember that, that useful in string function is going to tell me where a string is within another string. First string I want is what am I looking for? what am I searching? What's the string I'm searching? So I say search my mishmash field and actually no, 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 I want to take that back. All we want in this case is the length. I'm going to show you a neat trick. Because we're grabbing the end of this string, we can actually return the length, which is the len function. And you're also going to find that here within your string tree, I believe. Uh, if not, it really should be there because it's very, very useful. So the len function is going to give us the length of our mashed up field. So let's go ahead and throw that on the, on the report. So again, that's our name start, and this is going to be our name end, which is just the whole length of it because we can get away with that because this name always appears at the very end. So what we have to do now is just take the, the length and minus 1 or minus 2. So we're going to change actually our name middle function. Remember that this is just taking a chunk out of our reference and it's starting at our name start and it's only going now if we add the third parameter it's only going to go so many letters. So I'm just going to show you how that looks. If I just tell it to go four letters what I get is the first four at the starting position. I just want to show you how mid or middle works. So it's really only good. so that's not going to work for us because everyone's name is a different length, so we have to be able to account for that. So I'm going to go back into my name formula, and instead of just putting four there, well, think about what I'm doing. I want to take the whole length of the field and and subtract the uh, the name start position. So let's just look at what that does. 
So I'm going to take my name end, again that was the length of the field, and I'm going to subtract where the name starts. See what that did? So now because our middle our middle function within my name formula here isn't just going a, a finite amount of characters and starting, it's actually calculating it based upon uh, how long is the field and where does the name start. And it does that very simple math. And in this case it happens to work out to where it erases that end parenthesis. Um, I actually expected it to look like this uh, with the parent still at the end, in which case you would just have to go in here and actually just fiddle with your character positions just a little bit. Because once you have a, a mid function working, you can just go in here and, and kind of fine tune what's going on. Like if I wanted one character before the name start, I could do that and that would give me like my little colon there. Just to show you that it can, it can impact what's going on. So in this case actually, I do want, oops, take that away. And very good. So again, what I was just trying to show you is that if you need to, to rip out a value, if you need to cut a value out of a field, and actually I guess I'll just show you, uh, well, we don't really have enough time. I'm just going to show you uh, the last name, pulling out the last name on the contact field. Because if you think about doing that on a contact record, instead of like this big monster field that we just looked at, if we're looking at just like a problem splitting Hill out of Justin, <clears throat> well, it's actually a little easier. Because what we're actually going to do is we can create one new formula. We're going to call this last name. And again, we want to take the middle out of our contact field, okay? And we want to start cutting that middle out at the in string, looking at the contact, looking for a space, and just going to the end. And, and this is what I mean when I say fine-tune, because you'll, you'll see here in just a moment that it does need some fine-tuning. Okay, so what we have here is uh, the last name formula is, is deriving the last name from the contact field, okay? And if I look at that formula, I actually did it all in one big formula this time. I'm using the mid function. So let's just put a carriage return there. My first parameter to the mid function is my field to cut the middle from, right? And then my second parameter here is where to start cutting. So in this case, I, I'm, I'm looking at the, the uh, where is the space in the contact field. I'm getting sneaky. I'm actually inserting an in string within a mid function. And you can actually nest functions within functions within functions, and there's no problem with that. Uh, but again, once you start doing something like this, what you're going to end up with is that if you have a, just a contact name like Corey, it was giving a, an issue because it couldn't figure out where the space was because there was no space. So you run into issues like that. But again, uh, the, the in string and the mid function I find are, are extremely useful, especially when you're cutting out values. Now you have this, this nice last name field that you can do whatever you want with. Uh, you can group on it or, or sort by it or, or whatever you'd like. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite you all to hit star six to unmute your lines and hit me with any questions or comments. Uh, I'm always looking for the next batch of tips, uh, so please uh, feel free to contact me at justin at marksgroup.net and uh, let me know what you'd like to see.